we're done. No more. That's enough. What's up, guys? I'm Nietzsche. I'm a Tasty producer, and today I'm going to be testing the George Foreman quesadilla maker. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to be seeing if it works, if the quesadillas taste good, and if it's worth buying. Let's make some quesadillas! Boom. Here she is. Nice bright red color. It says here we've got meals in under 20 minutes, but on this other side here, it also says like done in less than five minutes. What, what is a quesadilla meal? So done in less than five minutes, it says here. That sounds like it's a little bit faster than it would take me on the stove. It says it's also done without oil or butter, which is interesting because at the top here, they've got a nice like brown quesadilla. You know, I would think that you'd put some like butter on there to get like a nice little sear like that. We'll see if it turns out the same way when we make our quesadillas. So let's break this thing out and see what it looks like. This looks very simple, looks super clean. It's a nice bright red color. It actually reminds me a lot of the pizza maker that Katie did a gadget review on. We are five minutes in and there is smoke, ladies and gentlemen. Click the link in the description if you haven't seen that. So I guess this is how you secure it. We've got like a handle here. Seems a little flimsy, honestly. Like even when you put it down, you can kind of just lift it back up. We got a nice non-stick coating, which is always important because something like this you can never put in a dishwasher or anything like that. So hopefully we'll see if we can uh, clean our mess up at the end, if that works. It looks like it's got grooves here, so maybe it kind of cuts it for you while you're making it. Maybe you can just like grab it and pull a quesadilla apart and you don't have to cut it. Everything else seems like a uh, pretty standard. So I guess at this point, the only thing that's left to do is test it out. All right, we are ready to start cooking with this thing. So I'm gonna read our first instruction here. Plug it in and wait until the green preheat light comes on. So let's do that. Okay, so our green light actually turns orange, so it's not just off, and then I guess it will turn green when it's ready. So the second step says it's gonna take about five minutes for this to preheat, and then to put a prepared quesadilla inside of it as opposed to building the quesadilla straight on the grill. I'm gonna start with a plain cheese quesadilla, and then we're gonna do another one with a whole bunch of ingredients loaded up and see if this thing can handle it. Lots of cheese, I love cheese. You want to leave a little bit of room around the edge so that, uh, you know, all of your cheese doesn't just like ooze out completely. I'm sure this thing won't handle that very well. All right, let's put the top one on here. Quesadilla. Now we just gotta wait for this thing to preheat and then we'll get this party started. So I've been sitting here waiting for our like preheat light to turn green, but like that orange light that I said earlier just turned off, but it doesn't turn green, it just turns off. So I guess when it's, off, it's ready, and when it's on, it's not. But now that it's off, I think we're ready to go. Let's open it up. This thing is hard to grab with just the... Um, all right, I can feel the heat radiating from this thing. Seems pretty strong. The box said that spray oil or butter isn't necessary, but the instructions say that I can use it. But I'm gonna do what the box says, and we're gonna go without it, and I'm just gonna put this straight on here. So let's get to cooking. So close it. My quesadilla is not super loaded. Ah, there we go. The box says this should take under five minutes and the instructions say three to four, so that seems like it's uh, consistent. We'll open it in three minutes, see if it's dark enough, and then we'll let it go longer if need be. There's the nice sizzling sound that's happening right now that's like making me excited. I feel like once we open it up, it'll be nice and golden brown. Listen to this. Let's open her up. What do you guys think? Is it gonna be brown? Are we gonna need to put it back in or no? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Okay, all right, I'm not mad at this at all. You know, we got like a little bit of a like golden texture here. All of our cheese is spread out a little bit, probably went a little bit too heavy. Things to note when we load this up and put a lot of ingredients in here. But everything's looking really nice. I'm gonna let it go for maybe a couple more minutes just to see if we can get it like nice and perfectly golden brown on the top there, and then we'll pull it out. Excellent, so we've hit our time. Let's open it and see what it looks like. Be careful opening this, because it is, it is a little bit snap. All right, so we let this go. It looks really good. Still got that like nice brown on the top. Hasn't been overdone. Oh look, I don't even need to. Just like a perfect little pizza. Just nice and even, real light. Stays together. Looks good. So I know the speculation was that maybe we'd be able to just pull it apart once we finish cooking it, but I don't think that there's any way that this is going to just pull apart. You definitely have to cut it. 
nice and crunchy. So my first impression is that the outside is really crunchy, which could be really nice, but I'm also a little bit afraid that the cheese on the inside also looks like the cheese on the outside, and that maybe it's not like oozy, maybe it's a little bit overdone on the inside. But when we do the next quesadilla, I'll let it go for a little less time. All right, let's see how it tastes. This is really funny, actually. So this has a really great taste, but I think we definitely let it go a little bit too long. There's literally like, it, there's barely any cheese actually registering in there. There's like a little like bed of cheese that's still on the bottom, but I guess it all like baked sideways or something. So I've learned a lot from this one. It's really tasty, but I wanna make our loaded quesadilla and see if we can make it better. So it gets one more chance. We are ready for our second attempt. We're gonna do a loaded quesadilla now. We've learned all that we need to learn. Let's see if we can make a perfect quesadilla. I've cleaned this thing. It was super easy. The nonstick coating totally works out. It was just a little bit of grease from the cheese. Wiped it up with a paper towel, no problem. So let's close this thing and let it preheat again. I've got some ingredients here that I'm gonna add into this loaded quesadilla. We're not gonna go too much because it was already having an issue with just cheese pushing this down, but we've got some refried beans, cheese of course, some chicken, and then we'll add some toppings at the end like salsa and sour cream. All right, I'm gonna start with my beans here, some nice refried beans. Now let's add some chicken. So I'm gonna try and raise this chicken similar to the pattern of the inside so it doesn't like get stuck when we try to close it. We're gonna put our cheese down now. An idea is that we're gonna get a nice even melt and it'll just ooze down nicely. I don't feel like we put enough cheese. More cheese. When is cheese a bad thing? Boom. All right, so my quesadilla is done. My light has turned off. We're preheated and we are ready to go. Let's put the sucker in there. Boom. it up. So for our cheese quesadilla, I actually had to force the latch down and force it closed. But this one, I'm not gonna do that. The instructions actually say, if it doesn't latch all the way, that's totally fine. So I'm just gonna close it over the top of our quesadilla and let it do its thing and see if it works out. I'm gonna let this thing go for three minutes and hopefully that's the perfect amount of time and we'll check back in after that. All right, we've hit our time. We've got some nice sizzling going on. I can see some cheese leaking over to the side. Let's open this up and see what it looks like. It smells real good too, by the way. Not as browned on the top as maybe I would like it, not as much as the last one, but because we overdid the last one, I'm just gonna say this is good. Let's take it out. Always super easy, never sticks. So this one didn't stay 100% closed, but I think it's a combination of the fact that there's so much in there it didn't close and we didn't force this uh, lid down here, but that's totally fine. It's not coming apart, no big deal. All right, let's cut this open and see how it turned out. This one also seems like it's cutting a little bit easier, maybe because it wasn't as crunchy that we didn't let it go as long. Mm, it's oozing out as I cut it, it's always a good sign. Let's see how this thing did. Even though this didn't get fully golden brown on the outside, it still has a nice crust to it and it feels like our uh, ingredients aren't super dry. So I really think we let it go for the perfect amount of time. So I'm kind of excited about this. It's not too full. This, this is a pretty good quesadilla just from the look of it. All right. Mm -hmm. This tastes delicious. It's absolutely gooey. You can see all our chicken in there. Our cheese didn't melt away. It's like the perfect amount of everything. Even though we didn't close it down, like these edges aren't like super open, so they're not like flimsy or anything. This quesadilla is really nice. There's still a nice crust on it, even though it wasn't perfectly golden brown. Everything is very flavorful, but you know, use flavorful ingredients. This is a really well put together quesadilla. If we're just the great in taste right now, I'm giving this thing an A. I'm really impressed with the ooze that we got got out of it, the crust that we have on the top of it, and just the taste of the entire thing. This is an A for me, and I'm actually very, very impressed. If you serve this to me at a restaurant, I probably wouldn't be like, oh, what, you know? Like, this, this is good, I'm impressed, good job. Good job, George. I don't touch that, it's hot. So we've made our quesadillas. The quesadillas were really good, but how do I feel about the George Foreman quesadilla maker overall? I think this is actually a pretty good product. I'm impressed. It did what it said it was supposed to do. Even though we couldn't close it, it still got a decent like golden brown crust on the outside. The cheese melted all the way through and it was really cooked evenly throughout. The only thing I don't like about it is if you like a thicker quesadilla, it's kind of hard to judge how much you can put inside of it and still get this thing to close. So with that being said, I'll give it a thumbs up. 
Do I think you should buy it? If you're a quesadilla lover, this is absolutely the product for you. It's quick, it's easy, and I'm happy with the way the quesadillas turned out. Well, that's it for the George Foreman quesadilla maker. If you have any suggestions for other gadgets that you want us to try, let us know in the comments below. But until next time, my friends, see you later. Oh, yes!